What is going on, guys? Welcome to episode 16 of my Newcastle United Football Manager 2017 100% Live Let's Play. Thank you guys for the support on this series. Whether you leave a comment or a thumbs up, I really do appreciate that, that you're supporting my channel and that you are enjoying uh, the series. It's really nice to see uh, your guys' feedback in the comments. So, yeah, we're going to continue now. And one thing I find funny, like some of you guys enjoy me getting mad. It's something that you enjoy about my videos. Well, that wasn't the plan, but as long as it's entertaining, that is good for you. But I can understand why it would be entertaining. Uh, some of my favorite videos of gaming is when people get mad at it. So, yeah, I can understand. So, guys, oh, you can I'm s oh, that game made me mad. We conceded right at... Uh, right at the end in there. Uh, oh, yeah, again with this. That's annoying. I, for I forgot about it being annoying for a while. But anyway, guys, you know how that game did play out. They scored a late, uh, the late goal uh, in the game to equalize. We're in a good position. Uh, yeah, that is, it's a bit frustrating. You can see, yeah, you can see the goals on that side there. I guess that's, um, that's good enough. Yeah, you can see Jermaine DeVoe uh, scored the late one there, 22nd minute. Ugh, <laughs> very, very annoying. But guys, we have to put that in the past now. Uh, as I've been mentioning, this last part of the season is going to be hopefully good for us. You take out Tottenham and Man City, the rest of the games we should be able to pick up a decent amount of points and yeah, we'll be in a safe position I think. Now uh, you can see the difference uh, between us and Burnley and Huddersfield. So there's six points there so mathematically we could still get relegated but I'm happy we've improved our goal difference to be better than theirs as well. So I think yeah, I, uh, we still need to make sure mathematically, uh, but I think, as I just said, with the games remaining also, I think we're in a good position to stay up. But then we just have to analyze what we're going to do next as well in terms of our signings for next season. We have to look to improve. And Tom Kearney, uh, yeah, he's been great. So we've got to make more signings like this. Let's just analyze it for a second, guys. Who's made a very good impact this season? Rykovic, I wouldn't say his performances has been the impact, but his development. He's always been improving in his attributes with his training. That is good to see. Uh, Joel Campbell, he's been a bit up and down. He showed some nice signs. I definitely think with better players around him, uh, that will increase his confidence and just his chances he'll have. And yeah, he'll finish more goals, create more goals as well, get a few more assists in the team. I think that would bring the best out of him. But I wouldn't, yeah, I've got to be honest, I wouldn't say he's been to the same level as Kenny. And same with Aqua, you could say maybe been a bit disappointing. Uh, had a good recent game against West Brom, helped us in that win, had a good game against Chelsea. So again, may need time to just to adjusting uh, to life in England. But Tom Kenny, see, he hasn't had to do that. So I think that's where he has that uh, difference. And he's been great. Six goals in the Premier League. I think, yeah, I would have taken that this point in the season. Charlie Adam on loan still need to uh, think about that. And Ben Pearson, when you think about it, and then, yeah, for us, Newcastle United, that is a decent sum of money, $11.5 million. But, yeah, he's definitely got so much more time in his career, especially, to, yeah, prove himself. He's only 22. So, yeah, he's going to be improving. I wouldn't say massively, but a bit more. So there we go. You can see our budget. And yeah, I'm just, I'm thinking, because I think I read it in the comments, someone said about free free transfers. So we can go to expiring, uh, let's just do like in the next six months, um, any players we have scouted as well. We've got a few. These are ones I like to think about for a while before making a move. There's uh, Victor Alvarez. Let's see if we go to his report, how much... He'll be like, yeah, he wouldn't be much better than Lazar. Really. Oh, that's left midfield. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think our current left backs are good enough. Like Lazar, Lazar's been showing some nice signs, so we'll leave it as is. If there's a right back though, ooh, Dimitri Mitchell from Manchester, ah, too much low attributes uh, for mine. Yeah, not very not very good, I'll say. For, for Premier League, you'll be on Premier League level. Mycon. How has he been performing for Hull? He's been pretty solid. I'm not sure how he... Because that's our problem. We have a right-back problem right now. And I'm not sure if he would exactly fix that. We have Gomez. He's getting a bit older. And then Yedlin, he's not really the highest quality. But, you know, I've been impressed with his uh, training, I guess. There's a few older guys. And how about Josh Clackstone? Now, he's at Hull City as well. But, yeah, he's not going to be good right now. Mike on, though. 
is an interesting one. I don't. I think he's a bit too old. Thirty five. Just he's very experienced. You can't lie about that. But yeah, I think we need some someone else. If we search by the value, there's Martin Kelly. He's at Crystal Palace. Oh, Zuniga. He's but I wouldn't say he's much better than what we have already. See, we need to get a, a better player. So that's what you're going to get from free transfers. It's probably not going to be a lot of uh, quality, um, as you can see, especially with the ones that would want to uh, join. So, yeah, I probably won't go for those, like, approach to sign uh, kind of types. I'll just analyze the signings for next season, actually, uh, when we make transfers. Yeah, because it, it doesn't immediately look like there's someone really, really good. Look at the values. Because, of course, if you go to you take off the unrealistic transfers or take off realistic transfers, yeah, there's much better players there. Look at that. But they wouldn't want to join. So, Or we could make them want to join, but then we'll have to pay them more than they deserve. And, yeah, I'm not really about that personally. Because then they, they won't be playing for the club. If you bring in those kind of players, they may be good, show their individual brilliance, but they won't really... There'll, there'll be games they just don't do anything because they won't care, really. That's my experience. I'd rather get players in that will play for the badge, that want to further their career as well. They want to prove they're a quality player. They don't play for the money. Uh, and to prove they... Because, of course, everyone wants to get more money, but they want to, they'll need to prove themselves. That's what they'll want to do. So, Jose Perez, the problem is we can't fit him into the formation. So, I'll say I'll start him. I'll start him in the next few, and we'll see. We'll see, because I, I don't mind. I don't think he's done bad in the inside forward on the left side. So, Charlie Adam in Alleg Alleligible. I can't even fucking speak again. Ineligible. There we go. <laughs> Ineligible uh, to play the next one. So, John Joe, yeah, he'll come in. You got a couple unregistered. They they're loan. They're players that are loaned out. So, just hide them. Yeah, players that are not at the club. No point in showing them because if they're not at the club, we can't use them. How about that logic? <laughs> uh, ben Pearson, he'll just come on the bench there. Uh, so. Perez, yeah, bring him ahead of Joel, uh, Joel Campbell there. Well, that's the, we could change. We could, that's he could be his nickname if he starts scoring goals. His name could be Goal Campbell. How about that? That would be good. But anyway, guys, yeah, we got this game against Stoke, but I have a feeling youth candidates evaluated. Let's see. After watching the like, when did they come in? Sorry, I, I, I didn't realize they came to us. I must have missed. Sorry if I missed it in the previous episode. Youth. Youth intake. When was this? So, the, okay, that was just... Sorry, I just skipped across that now. I didn't even notice it. Sorry. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> it's hard to notice things sometimes. But yeah, normally that's like a big... It, it, it didn't like flash at me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Normally it stands out more. Uh, anyway, guys, yeah, I thought, okay, we got it settled. Oh, Jonathan Errington looks as if he could possibly emerge as one of the best players of his generation. See, that sounds nice, and hopefully that will be the case. So, yeah, Jonathan Errington, maybe he could be a good player. What is it, your defensive midfielder? Will be a decent position for us. But anyway, guys, yeah, we'll go to check out that and see yeah, what his actual rating looks like. Okay, view youth candidates team. I'm trying to click on it, but it's not showing up. No idea. Can we just view the youth team here? So sorry, guys. When I was clicking on the other one, it wasn't working. So, so I have to see in the... Maybe because I went another day, I continued another day because I didn't check it out. That will probably explain it. Uh, yeah, so we'll just search by the potential there. Jonathan Errington... Oh, we've got a few though. And there's a guy with the same car Zach Carter. He's got it sounds like he's going to be a good player just off his name. Sounds like he'll be good. We'll check out the keeper Bob Wood. Uh, I'm just going to see his reports. Okay. He's got he, he seems to have good potential in him. So I think uh, I'll just go ahead uh, to approach to sign and yeah, just all those defaults exit the talks. So there we go, Bob Wood, Zach Carter. He's got he's injured already, six to nine days. And Zach Carter, he just got a small one. Okay, let's see what he looks like though. Okay, 
Not too bad. Not too bad. Good potential. Uh, he's only strong on one foot. But doesn't look too bad. Could be a very good striker by the looks of things. Uh, he's got a lot of potential in him. His reports. Check out his information. Sometimes it's like touted as someone, but not every single time. But yeah, I think yeah, he's worth signing up. So yeah, we've got a few. So finalize that deal. Uh, Zach Carr, just take a look at him again. Yeah, good finisher. Definitely, yeah, a bit to work on. I'll, I'll have to think about that a bit more. Even I'm if, even like I'm doing this 100% live, there's some things I need to think about more w- while I'm not commentating. You know what I mean? You just need to think so you make the right decisions. In term, That's what I mean about training. Like what, what do we need to work on attribute-wise and um, those kind of things. But anyway... Jonathan, oh, he's got a bit of an interesting haircut as well. See, his attributes look balanced. How is he only 15? Oh, my God. Wow. And he, he's not weak on a foot as well. That's not bad at only 15 to be reasonable on your weaker foot compared to, like, just, <laughs> you're just being weak. You can't uh, do it at all. But, yeah, looks good. But very mixed, I'll say. Definitely the passing will be worked on. Uh, we will... Well, 100% sign him up. Has he got any information? Not really. He's not touted to be anyone, but yeah, no doubt he could be a wonder kid for sure. Can prove a lot in the future and very, very interesting. And he's not too far away from the first team in terms of his current rating as well. Still, yeah, he's going to get a lot more development and he'll he'll get that at some stage. Wowee. That, he looks amazing. He is a talent, that is for sure. Jonathan Errington, uh, he seems like a good type uh, for defensive midfield, most definitely. I look like the look of him 100%. Uh, let me know what you think of him. And he's got uh, like a four, yes, he's like one of those classy young players and he has like a kind of an out there, outrageous haircut just uh, to be a bit individual. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about him now. See, this has just suddenly got me uh, more excited when you get youth players through. So if we go back, this would this kid's got the lot hasn't he okay someone's saying it about well i don't think you'd ever say a goalkeeper has the lot because they can't do everything well unless you just talk about goalkeeper yeah but it's hard to say he's only 16 you see his performance yeah i I don't know why someone would say that (laughs) he's got the lot right now he's got two very good attributes handling and reflexes already 14 so i think he's showing good signs so we've got three different kind of players we've got more attacking guy then we've got defensive midfielder and now a goalkeeper so i'd say that's a pretty good youth intake let me know what you think in the comments as well so yeah i'm i'm very happy uh, with that sorry if i sound like i got distracted i just got a text from someone so yeah i'll just leave that for a bit later anyway guys <laughs> yeah uh Wood signs a contract and Rykovic, again, showing him. How often has that said so far this season? Like he's pleased with his progress. Very, very good. Very, very good. But guys, what I did want to show you is uh, the staff responsibilities. I'll find it eventually. But anyway, the first team, no, not first team, uh, in the club. You can see for the under 18s, uh, we have head of youth development, Joe Joyce. So yeah, he's definitely done a good job to find those lads and bring them to me. And yeah, sets up the individual training for them as well and runs the training. So yeah, Joe's doing a very good job. Can call him JJ, but that's probably not what people call him in real life. Who knows? But <laughs> yeah, anyway, guys, yeah, he's yeah, he's done well to bring me those lads. So offer Bob Wood, did I, did I not offer him a contract? Oh, professional contract. So not yet. We just signed you your first youth contract. <laughs> so, yeah, of course, all those guys will get professional contracts at some point as long as they get their development. But uh, this guy is definitely not if you just see the difference in their quality. So to me, I said this last time, but I just like to let them run out of, run out of their contract. You don't have to pay them a release fee then. Just let them play out their contract. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely not going to be a good player for us. Uh, in the future. Uh, see, look at this guy. He's like, announce Errington. He's got so much potential, it's scary. The only thing is, it's sorry if you're a defensive midfielder, but the the only bad thing is he's a defensive midfielder. Not the, You need a good player in each position, I won't lie, but with that potential and that current ability he would have, if that was a striker, he could be one of the best players in the world. And instead, he's probably 
going to turn into one of the best defensive midfielders in the world, which you can't complain about. But if you would choose one of the best strikers in the world or would you choose one of the best defensive midfielders in the world? I guess it depends what your team, what you need. But, yeah, I, I can't complain at all. We, <laughs> I don't want to sound like a com- I'm complaining about it because he's very, very good. Um, well, he's got good potential in him. Uh, what's this? Freddie Woodman, another keeper. I'm probably going to have to consider it. Um, yeah, we'll say that one. It's a pleasant experience, yeah, I suppose, yeah, when interacting with another manager in terms of transfers. Uh, but, yeah, I kind of just want to get into the games now, if I'm brutally honest. But if we go if we go back a bit, yeah, where the youth candidates were ele- um, evaluated, I was going to say elevated. <laughs> I was going to say because usually they would play a match and, yeah, they haven't they haven't had games. So, yeah, we would just have to have to wait and see. Uh, in, until they play a game, I suppose. Well, or they did play a game. Sorry, I'm just I'm just trying to look through. Yeah, where's Errington? There, there's the game they played. Okay, would they play more? I don't know because yeah, one game is like that's what I mean. Like one game is not enough to analyze uh, players. I would have to say. So Zach Carter, he signed his contract. Uh, very good finishing though for a 15 year old. I will have to say that physically not too bad. It's nice to look at. Uh, to know he's going to be a good player, but we'll just go defensive positioning uh, for this upcoming game. Because there's been all this stuff surrounding, like this youth stuff, I might just get the one game in this episode. I like to do more, but this has taken up so much time of the episode already. It's just like so much going on with the youth. With the youth and first of all, I didn't even realize the youth intake happened until I got a different <laughs> different message in the inbox. See, there's, there's so much things uh, to take in with Football Manager. That can happen sometimes. Uh, Premier League, West Brom lose. That's good for us. And Leicester drawing and Everton as well. That keeps some positions in sight uh, for us at least. So, yeah, if we can get the win next up here. Uh, Stoke, they're doing all right this season. But it's home game. It's home game for us. And don't forget, Kevin and Babu, good potential in him. So we've got some great talents, guys. This, uh, yeah, I'll just leave him to the physio, Grant Hanley. Probably not going to be playing him anyway. He's a bit mad at me, isn't he? Uh, But, yeah, like, this is what I love. And, of course, it helps which team you are as well. Uh, Newcastle United have some young players at the team already. But in one intake like that, we have three guys for the future. Again, with the uh, the correct and right training, we can uh, develop them with tutoring and sending them out on loan and, We've got a really good foundation to build off now. I wasn't sure. Like, I was thinking about it a bit. Like, who'd we get in the youth intake? I was thinking about one. But we got three potential guys for the future. That's what I'm just really... Three in different positions. That's really, really good. Like I said, if I get the training right, everything like that in terms of their development, uh, which, like I said, that's something I personally like to do. I like to see the development. But when you get them in right away, like at 15, 16... It's, it's a bit more than that. Like, oh, if they're like 18, 19, yeah, you give them first team game time and maybe change their training up a little bit. But at 16, at 15, 16, even 17, you you got to focus on them a bit more. But what I like to do, if you have a good head of youth development and youth coaches, they can do the job as well. If you don't want to, I suppose, yeah, waste so much time on that. They're going to go, they're going to go well in terms of uh, training those guys up, doing what's best for the players. That's why they have those roles in a club, you know? Oh, okay. I was saying, oh, there wasn't a guy. This guy looks very experienced in his attributes. If I didn't look at his age, I could tell he was an experienced player. Generally, yeah, if players have good mentors, uh, they'll be, um, yeah, a bit older. So he's interest me, actually, and his contract is expiring. See, I wouldn't have found his value is 105K. So sometimes, oh, yeah, he's good on both feet as well. I've never heard of this guy before, but he could be an okay signing. I wouldn't say like a world-class signing or anything like that for us. Hmm. Yeah, dumb it. Okay, he wants to play more games. But yeah, guys, definitely the Stoke City will be the single game in this episode. There's been so much else. He, uh, leading champ, but he looks better. He's like a lot of experience. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think about that guy and we'll have to see. But yeah, at this current point in time, I want to get into this Stoke game. It's a very important one, I feel. 
if we get the win, especially uh, I like to see what you guys think. But I think if we do get this win, uh, you will be pretty convinced uh, heading towards the next season. But again, it's a time to see Yedlin. Let's see his current training. Okay, improving a little bit more. He's just technically, you can if you got to focus that take away his improvements. He's still not good enough technically. That he still just says he's a good player for championship sides. I wouldn't say he may not ever be Premier League quality, but it's hard to. Uh, do you know the problem? His picture. He's smiling at me. He's smiling at me and he makes it hard to say anything bad. <laughs> Would probably be the different case if he didn't have a profile picture, if I turned them off. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, Diame. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Actually, see, it's weird. I kind of signed Pearson as backup, but for the amount we signed him for, he's a decent player. Uh, like, it's a de like, you don't want him just wasting away and not using him. So, I don't know, because... I signed him when we had injuries and all of that. And even here, we're missing, well, three players. Didn't I turn that off? Or am I blind? Not at club. Man. <laughs> uh, football manager is weird sometimes. Or maybe it's me. Maybe I didn't click something correct. Well, it wouldn't be the first time that's happened. So I'm pretty happy with this lineup here against Stoke. Uh, we can go in with it. And oh, we're going to start dumb it. But Lazar's been good, but then Dummond's been complaining he hasn't played too much. Ah, very, very tough, isn't it, uh, to get that uh, balance right. So, yeah, I'm just checking who's not in the team. And, yeah, we'll we'll do all right without those guys. Good lineup, good lineup, good lineup. Yeah, happy with that. I was just uh, going through all the players there. And let's see, guys, can we beat Stoke here Today, they're playing that 4 4 1 1. So, what we will do is we'll do the tighter marking on the attacking mid and the striker, and yeah, hard tackle as well. And then, ah, oh, they've got some dangerous wing. They've got Barahino and Shakir. Oh, very dangerous. Yeah, so close them down and show them to the weaker foot. So, there we go. And then for the center mids, oh, we will also just close them down. So, get into the team talk now. Assertively. Ooh, the media have been praising you lately. I feel like I've said that before. Uh, great opportunity. The pundits, they've been right to back you up. Especially, yeah, last few games. Oh, we should have won the last one, uh, shouldn't we? But, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. Well, oh, they've got some good... Glenn Johnson, how old is he now? 32. So, yeah, losing a bit of pace now. Maybe could be exploited. Uh, Going to get um, Yedlin uh, getting forward. Come on. Shelby, can you get to this? No. It's a cross again and Rykovic. See, we've conceded quite a few goals this season, especially in those situations. And that's where Rykovic is going to learn from that experience, uh, when to come up, uh, when to grab the ball and everything like that. Time is run uh, to the ball and everything. So, yeah, he's going to need this. And he'll become better at dealing with crosses as well. I'll just show you something in a second after this. Yeah, they waste a chance. Rykovic, the aerial reach, very important. That, that's all right. It's like 14 already, but yeah, he'll get some experience with his positioning and everything like that. You see those attributes improving. So yeah, and his command of area, all those things tie together uh, with being a good goalkeeper. Like he's got the right attributes because you expect them. Like if they were maybe two attributes more, he'll be quality. And that's what they will be in a few seasons, no doubt, or at some point uh, because of his age. He is really young. He will develop to that at least. And now a Jose. Uh, Fletcher intercepts. Now let's see where they go. Berahino to Boyan. Oh, does anyone remember years ago when Boyan was an 18-year-old at Barcelona and he was amazing in football manager? I think you could sign him cheap or something. It was crazy. You can get him for a cheap price and he develops to one of the best strikers in the game. And we go very close there. I think it would have been like FMO7, FMO8, something like that because I definitely remember him back then. Yeah, he was a good prospect. It was high, high potential, and you can just get him for that compensation. Compensation back on the – yeah, we're just approaching to sign him. Uh, probably one of the best signings you could make. <laughs> That's something I thought of at some point. Maybe I could do a save with an older football manager game. Let me know what you would think about that because it'll be pretty cheap to buy. Just get it from eBay or something like that. But yeah, let me know what you think because we may just be on a chance now. Damn it. Oh, well, that's a good chance. <laughs> very, very good there. Good finish, damn it. 
and the decision to start him, maybe that's what I tried to say first and I tried to cover it up. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, yeah, that was a really good decision to bring him on because he's come up and he scored here. Very, very good uh, chance here. Just Oh, we're moving up. Very nice to see. See, look at this. After this, we're just, what, four points away uh, from 13th. If we can finish in that lower mid-table area, maybe from somewhere in between uh, 11th and 14th, I'm trying to see what's realistic. Oh, oh not like 8th or 9th. Probably too far away from that points-wise at the minutes. But, yeah, I think the second half of the season is not too bad, just as long as we don't concede a late goal. The minute's gone. The minute is gone. Oh, wait. No, it's not a penalty. I don't have the energy to get mad. Look where my mouse is. Look where my mouse is. Berahino, they don't deserve this, so they better miss it. Better miss, better miss. You didn't deserve that, mate. You didn't deserve that. Look at the time, pretty much two minutes. I know it's the minimum, but nah, penalty or in injury time of the first half, really. It's just, it, it's annoying more than anything. Like, it doesn't feel deserved, which sometimes that's how penalties work, but it just... Uh, you could tell my. You, you can see my reactions now. I'm just going to say I'm not happy with the performance. It's more so because I'm just mad at that decision. Maybe it was a penalty, but yeah, as you see. Well, was it an error by Yedlin because he's six point three? I didn't really notice. I thought it was the first half was just going to end, but obviously wasn't. But yeah, I don't really get so frustrated at it. it I suppose when it's unexpected, you get shocked and you're like, oh, that happened. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, come on, how would we go to a losing position from being in a winning position? Oh, my God. Very frustrating. Uh, get your act together, boys. What are you doing? What? Oh, my God. He's just... Is there like a team talk where you can say, wake the fuck up? Because they seem asleep at the minutes. Far, man. What What are you doing? I, I don't even know. And Bemba... Lasalles, okay. Do you know what they're doing? Because I don't. I do not know. Man, very very annoying. Some some of these games, man. Um, trying to trying to think at this point who's going to be a good move. Some horrendous performances. I'm going to say. In defence, the ratings look terrible. Matt Ritchie hasn't been that good, but his conditions all right. Uh, I'm going to take of John Joe Shelby. He might be close to on the outers of the club as well. I'm not really sure. Because, um, yeah, we'll, we'll leave that. But John Joe Shelby, see, he's worth almost $12 million. So he's got to be performing as one of our better players. So, again, if we go search, if you go by the value, you can see Canny and then Pearson, who he signed. Shelby's the next one. He's the next one. So he was really the most valued before we signed anyone else. Let's look at this. I brought in Joel Campbell on loan, Pearson and Kenny, and yeah, they're all above. They're like the other high-valued players. So you take them out. John Joe Shelby is the most valuable player at the club if you take out the players I signed. So, okay, no, sorry. Yeah, confirm. So he's got to play like that. Right now, he's not. He's just playing like an average player in the squad, like who should be on a rotation or something like that. He's not starring. And he's not having match-winning games, or, or not enough anyway. He's had a couple, definitely not more than a handful. And that's where he just needs to do better. And here, Mitrovic is going to come off, and we're going to bring on Dwight Gale. Oh, he's, I feel like he's a fan favourite to, not because like he's been amazing, he's been up and down. Like I'm the same, but you guys, I think, like you just want to see how he, you're interested to see what he's going to do next. So... <laughs> it's it's just like interesting what he's going to come up with form see a bit inconsistent but maybe for a team like just expect to avoid relegation that's not bad that form he's been better in the last couple of months I'll say than the, the, the just the rest of the season before that and yeah guys we'll go with that and I think we'll just change a bit of uh, instructions we'll go higher tempo now we'll leave standard but we'll take off retain possession and we'll leave that we'll leave that just not too, not too many changes, just a few little alterations there. And let's see if Dwight can come on 
and do something special. Dwight Gale. Let's see. Okay. Maybe we could score Diame. Yedlin. Could Yedlin do something? I don't know. Diame. Kenny! Oh, Tommy Kenny! He does it again! And we better hold on from there. He His shots are amazing from outside of the box. He scored multiple goals this season like that. And the teams aren't learning. Butlin got a hand to it, but it wasn't enough. And we better hold on to it here. So I've got to manage that way. I can't just say we better hold on to it. So we've got to make those changes, uh, make according changes. So I'm going to bring on Isaac Hayden and we are going to t take off Kane. He's got his goal. He's done his job. I think that's because, yeah, he's he's done the job now. The, flat, the fans can, can applaud him as he comes off and we just need to be more defensive now. So, yeah, we would, we'll put Aqua there. And Diame, even uh, Diame, he could be on defend duty there. Uh, and then Hayden, defensive midfielder, defend. That's what we need to focus on right now. Uh, put the fullbacks on defend. This is where we're going to have to yeah, change up again. We'll go on the defensive. We'll drop back to a, a normal tempo and more direct, more counter more counter style, but I want to be on defensive and we'll take off the offside trap because we want to be sitting more deep. I was thinking about that last time, but yeah, if we're trying to sit back, it makes no sense playing the offside trap and a high defensive line. So we'll sit, I don't, yeah, we'll sit slightly deeper, slightly deeper and waste time when we can, which I don't really do too often, be more disciplined, stick to positions. Yeah. Play that way. And low crosses, Let's just try and whip them in when we can. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Hopefully, guys, that can be... And we'll be more structured. More structured team shape. See, to me, uh, structured is better defensively. Like your, your team, you played in a, sh in a structured shape. More flexible. It allows to be a bit more creative. So hopefully that showcases right now. And then, obviously, team talk will go assertively, tighten up. Whew. Told you, see, working for results. That's what you have to do when you're managing a lower team or a lower team with, um, I suppose, more expectations for you to finish lower in the table. You, you've got to manage more. Like if you're a top team, you're winning 3-0 in a game, you just leave it. You don't really make too much changes. You know you're going to win the game. So, yeah, you got to in, like individually manage the game so much more, which, which makes you enjoy the game more, most definitely. Hayden, we're just playing it out. We're keeping possession and we've worked for this victory. I almost feel tired after this. <laughs> it's been a hard fought victory. I think this game most definitely uh, showcases that. See, you take away that penalty. Stoke did nothing. They had nine shots in total, but yeah, they just got this random penalty that you didn't really see coming. A good win. Sure, sometimes that can happen, but it did feel a bit weird. So we do get that victory. I am happy with that, guys. Yep, 2-1. And there we go. Dummett impresses for Newcastle. Um, yeah, as I said, guys, we'll leave it there. Just the one game in this episode uh, because this was more the other side of management. It's more so the youth guys, uh, the, the youth intake in this episode. A few little other things uh, to see. So, yeah, just change up the episodes like that. But, guys, if you are really enjoying this, man, you know what I'm enjoying? Tom Kearney, top goal scorer, highest average rating, and he's got equal most assists, which is only three, but yeah, sharing the loads, that's the way. And yeah, Diame has been good as well. So wish you're seeing a lot more signs now in the second half of the season. This, what, uh, two months and a bit? Yeah, since January, uh, we've been, uh, been very good, like eight games for the season now to remain. And you think, yeah, we've got it now, depending on, uh, I say we've got it, we're staying up. Depends on, if Burnley win the next game, it's still live <laughs> that we can get relegated. I said it's still live, but yeah, you can really see us staying up from here. You can see the form has been much better as a whole. If you look at that, like we had some results there, Peterborough, Bright, but after that, it wasn't, that period there wasn't fun. Like so many episodes there, yeah, we weren't getting many victories. But now, yeah, you're getting good results in basically yeah, every episode mostly. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the very next one.